Funding for painting journeys is provided by Veritas. Financial knowledge is power. Be empowered. God's beauty is all around us, and my goal as an artist is to capture and interpret that beauty on canvas and to take you, the viewer, along with me on this painting journey. Hello, and welcome to Painting Journeys. My name is Kitty Lynn Klish. And once again, we're going to take a journey across the canvas. Uh, first of all, though, I'd like to tell you what, uh, what we did with our uh, last episode, how we finished up um, the Pacific coastline uh, along the north, uh, in the northwest. Uh, you know, you, you drive along the Pacific Coastline Highway and you see the most gorgeous scenes. And I happened to just, I stopped and I, I saw this and it just took my breath away. It was a foggy day. And as you, if you watched our last episode, you noticed that I had it pretty well completed by the end of the show. I took it, I took it back to my home studio and I just added a little more color here and there and some leaves in the foreground, and I pretty much left the rest of the painting alone because it had that atmospheric quality that I really liked. Now today, I'm gonna to ask you to use your imagination a little bit. Um, these flowers are, alas, not from my garden, but here where I live, the tulips are getting ready to bloom. It won't be long now. Mine are about six inches tall and they have some buds on them, you know. And I thought how nice it would be to paint some tulips for you today. So I, I chose, you know, five silk tulips and I've got them drawn on my canvas in a way that makes them look like they're growing in the garden. So you're going to have to imagine with me today that we're taking a journey through my garden. We're sort of meandering along and through the tulips, tiptoe through the tulips as Tiny Tim would say. Okay, so um, it's a regular palette, the one I usually use. I've added some magenta and um, some bright uh, phthalo yellow green and some Indian yellow and a pale pink just for a floral palette. I like to do that once in a while. And once again, as I said, this is Painting Journeys. I'm Kitty Lynn Klish, and now it's time to go to work. So let's get some paint mixed up here. I think for the background, I'm, I have a lot of, of uh, leaf patterns drawn on. Actually, this is kind of a fun thing, uh, way to do it. I tone the canvas and, and then I draw on it with charcoal. Then I take water and I just go over it. And when the water dries, I brush away all the excess charcoal and I have a faint drawing. I, I hope you can, you at home, can see this because it's, it really gives you like a road map where to go. Um, let me see here. I think maybe we've got yellows. We have yellows and oranges and greens. That's our primary palette. And so our complement would be um, a, a violet, more of a, of a magenta color. So this tulip is probably not going to end up being quite that pink. It's going to have more of a violet hue to it in order for it to be the complement of the three uh, other colored ones that I have. The white one back here, that's just for atmosphere. It's not really, as you can see in my drawing, it's not really even showing all that much. So if if the violet, if the grade violet is my complement, then that's what I'm going to put on in the background. I want the, I want this to be. You always have that choice. Do you want your painting to be high key or low key? A low key painting means that it's primarily 
darker. And a high key painting, um, such as this calls me to do, is light and bright and airy. So uh, I think we're gonna go with a high key painting today. I think that'll be fun because after all, spring is in the air and, and we want to put that on our canvas, get that feeling on our canvas. I have, you know, it's kind of disheartening. You drive down the street and your neighbors have daffodils that are open and blooming and gorgeous. None of mine are open yet. My, my, mine are so slow. And after a winter in Wisconsin, trust me, you are really ready for the spring flowers. It's, it's really just all you, about all you can think about. My husband loves to garden. He's out there working every day. So when it does come to fruition, it's going to be beautiful. I wish I could take you, the viewers, right to my garden and have you watch me paint right in the garden. I do that a lot in the summertime. I enjoy that so much. Thank you for being patient with me. I'm just kind of mixing up here and trying to get just the right color here that I want for this background. I want it to be just so. It seems to need to be a little warmer. Uh-huh, I, I think I've I think i got it. I think I've got it. Okay. All righty. Ooh, that looks still, that, that still looks kind of dark. I'll probably be putting um, the colors of the flowers in there too in the background, echoing the the um, colors, make it more um, unified. And you do that by putting some of the the colors in. Let's get some of this lighter stuff down here. Okay. I want a little darker in there. A little darker, a little bluer down in here. And Right over in here, down here. It's, it, <laughs> it's, I have so many um, positive shapes and negative spaces on here and it's all done so lightly. I'm having just a little trouble seeing, but oh well. You know what I do then? I just paint right over it. What the heck? I'm the only one that knows what it was supposed to look like. I can change it whenever I want to, right? Yeah. All righty. Now, let's get a few leaves going back here. First of all, I want to show you what I'm talking about when I talk about the color. If I put this color right in there, 
That's the color of that yellow tulip. It has a little bit of green in it too. This would be a, I'm seeing this now. This would be a fun painting to do with a palette knife. I don't have the right knife with me today, but it would be a fun one. Okay. And then this, this little guy right here, he has some orange in him. The reason I'm doing this is just to show you how um, these colors are going to pop against this background that I've put on. This one here is a parrot tulip. Parrot tulip, that's my favorite type of tulip because it has all those roughly edges. They're just beautiful. Now with those colors on there, it gives you a good idea of what we're going to have here and how nicely they're gonna balance. Now I'll go ahead and get some leaves in. That's enough of that playing around. I guess I just wanted to give you a better idea of where I'm going here. Okay, it's a, tulip leaves are usually a, a nice warm green. Now the one, the leaves that are in the background, I'm going to go right into the background paint because, and I'm gonna have them be just a little darker because I wanna present them as more um, shadow-like. I don't want everything on my canvas to be standing out at attention. I want it to be a little a little smaller brush. Okay. Now this is the leaf right in here. All right. I'll take a little bit of green and Nope, I don't want that one. That's too. Here we go. This is what I want, more, a little more like this. It's nice soft edges. Just so I want them to look like they're just like shadows. going away into the and then if I want to I can always come back over this and knock it down. And make it even more of a suggestion. And that's what I wanted. I wanted something that was more suggestive. At least that's what I think I want right now. Um, sometimes it's, as the painting's going on, you're going through that painting process, you realize that there's other approaches that possibly might work a little better, but you don't know that unless you're open to trying them, trying them all. Maybe I'll have just a little bit of a 
edge on this tulip leaf here. And then I guess if he's coming up from this one, then I guess he really should be just a little bit brighter coming up there. There we go, that looks nice. And there again, I don't know how dark I want these because I don't know how bold the flowers are going to be. I may have to lighten up the background a little bit. I was hoping today that it would just kind of flow right out of me onto the canvas. Some days that happens, and then there's days when that doesn't. And there are days when I have to take it back to the studio at home, my home studio, and working, work it to get that effect that I wanted. All righty. Get these um, stems on there. Let's see where I need some background. Right in here. Mm -hmm. And right in here, and that should be lighter. And maybe just a little warmer. There, I like that warmed up a little bit more. All right. I want us to feel like we are actually walking amidst the tulips and that's why I have so many leaves coming up. I'll probably soften that down a little bit. Here's a leaf here. Always has astounded me how some of the some of the leaves on the tulips, depending upon the type of tulip you have, some are very floppy and wide, and others are quite rigid. We're going to make this one a big floppy one. He's going to come right underneath there. There we go. Lighten that up a little bit right in here. A little bit of dark right in there. So that this other brighter, lighter, more yellow green leaf and be coming right here on top of it. And 
it makes it a little yellower on the tip here so that it shows up just a little bit more. And we'll make this be a little bit darker down here on the bottom. Okay, I think we need a little bit of hmm. It's hard to tell where everything is here. This should be coming around here. Maybe I won't do this like this again. <laughs> Maybe that's a little harder than I thought it was going to be. All right, let's see here. This stem is coming right out of here. And that's the flower there. And then he's coming this way, right in here. And he's going to have some yellow on him. Let's see here. So we had these two like this, and so now we'll go for this stem that is coming right from underneath this tulip here, and it's coming down behind. And we have another one that is coming out of here. And that's for this, this white tulip that's right back here. If you can see that, there's a stem coming right down there. So that should be darker, though, underneath there because that's in shadow. A little bit of a convergence there. That's okay though, that'll make it interesting. So how many stems do I have there? Let me see. Okay, I need one for this little guy right here and his is coming right here. Okay, now let me see, we have a, another leaf. All righty. And I think I, now I'm seeing these over here, and I realize that they need to be darker. For the balance. Hmm. 
Maybe this one will go this way. Okay. This is just a little too yellow. I'm going to change that. There we go. Okay, now let me step back and see what I've got here. All right. Looks like we've got a lot of stuff all pointing upward, huh? Well, that's what they do. We can probably knock that down, though, a bit. They don't have to be that bright going out of the top. I think that helps a lot. <clears throat> there. Yeah, that helped. Okay, now let's start on those flowers. First, I think I'm going to put the white one in. Um, it's very secondary, so I'm not going to pay a lot of attention to it. Or Let's put it this way. I'm going to try to not put a lot of attention to it into it because our our really important part is is these other beautiful colorful ones. So he's back in shadow right in here there's kind of a cast shadow on him. It should have a little more green in it, I think. Yep. Okay. And this is coming around like this. And that's coming up like that. Okay. And then um, I'm going to take the white and lighten it ever so much. And I'm going to have this come up here like this. Now, this is my most favorite type of technique in painting florals. It's my push-pull, what I call the push-pull. I push the paint up. And then, like so, and then drag it back down. And it gives that marvelous quality of, of um, thick and thin. Okay. All right, that, that'll be that one.
I'm going to take a little bit of this off because this orange flower is actually in front of the tulip. So I'm taking some of that white off. Now I'm going to come over and work on the yellow one. It has a lot of green in the um, bottom of it here. You can see them a little lighter. So you can see the green. There's a lot of green in the yellow tulip usually. So we'll just, not that light. wanted. <clears throat> okay, here we go. There we go. That's it. A little bit coming here. And this is a little lighter right in there. Okay. Up here on this cup right here, there's a little bit of a green. There's a little green coming like this. This is turning right here. That looks a little green. And that's coming around like that. Now then, we have a darker, uh, darker yellow right on this underneath side, right in here. And that's right there. There's a darker yellow right in here next to this green. Just softens that right, right into that. And a darker yellow right in here. And right over here, I, you can, as you can tell, I'm working really hard right now. I want, I want to have this, at least the canvas covered, even if it's not perfect. I want the canvas to be covered. This petal is pushing over into here, like so, and then coming back around pushing there and back around and then up like so. And then there's some very pale yellow right up in here. This this little, his little turnabout thing here where there's a petal in the back there that we're just getting to see just a little rim of. Isn't that fun? Just a little yummy rim of that petal as it goes right there. And then this petal right here is coming up. I don't think this is the same brush I was using, is it? I guess it is. Okay. It's not doing what I want it to do, so we better change bolts in the middle of the stream. Here we go. This guy's a little stiffer. He'll push, push and pull better. All right, I want him to push and push and push and pull. Now you can see what I'm talking about. Isn't that fun? And then this will be over here. And then there is a little bright, there again, a bright 
bright yellow petal that is turned back right in here and it's coming down right there. And then there's a little tiny bit of bright yellow right back in there. And this is coming like this. And that's coming like that. And inside, let's see here, inside of here, When you push and pull, then you get that look of the of the um, petal. Okay, and there's something very dark and mysterious inside of this little guy that I can see. I believe it's called a stamen, as I've told you before. I never pay too much attention about what things are. I just paint them for color and value. But that he looks quite dark. So we're going to just poke a little something in there. Okay, my dark is turning green on me because you mix that dark with green and you get, I mean with yellow and you get green. So what can we do here? We've got to make him a little, got to make him show up just a little there. There we go. Okay, now then we'll just take this and come down over it. And now we have the feeling that we're seeing something inside. This right here needs to be just a little bit lighter. And right in there. Okay, I think that's pretty. All right, now let's, let's do the, um, this parrot, the parrot tulip, ooh, yes. Is this what I was using? Hmm, oh, here it is down here. Boy, got brushes everywhere. <laughs> Isn't this fun, gang? You just watch me just painting like a crazy lady here. Okay, I love flowers, they, they, uh, they really, really move me. Okay, we have this one big petal right in here and it's very ruffly. And it's coming right around there. It goes up here and it gets lighter as it comes over here. And it's a little darker as it's right under here. Okay. And <clears throat> this flower is kind of collapsing. Doesn't seem to matter what I do with it. It's just, it didn't want to stay up straight. So I thought, well, you know, after a imagine, you know, you've got these beautiful flowers out there and you have a big windstorm. What happens? Well, the flowers all lay down or they blow over cockeyed. And that's what happens to the tulips so often. It's heartbreaking. Or the other problem is, of course, the rabbits. The rabbits are little stinkers. They come and get them and eat them. I remember one year, I was so proud of how my tulips were going to be. And, oh, there was just a bumper crop. Beautiful, beautiful tulips. I knew it was going to be, oh, just absolutely great. And where I live, I, I live where my, my, um, 
front room window is higher. And my husband said, come and look at, out the window and see what's happened one morning. And I came out there, and all of my tulips had been eaten right down to the ground. There was nothing left, nothing. That was so disappointing. So this year, we're doing everything we can to keep them. I think there's products that you can use that will keep the little rabbits away. You know, and the rabbits are so sweet and so cute and everything, and I just love them. But why do they have to like tulips so much? some darks in here on this one. This this guy's going to need a lot of help. I'm probably going to have to fix him when I get back <clears throat> to the studio at home. Let's just take a little color and put over here. And He doesn't look good at all, but I know that the time is going, and I can't delay, and I promised you I'd get this canvas covered, and besides, you know that you can always tune into the next show, and you'll see the painting finished. trying to get this to look like what it is, but it doesn't look like much. So best just leave it alone, I guess. Because the more I play, the worse I'm making it. Maybe one right here, maybe that'll help. There we go. Okay, let's go for the orange one. We'll leave that one alone for now. Now this one is deep, kind of a deeper orange down inside. see here um, and then it gets kind of a yellowish on the edges okay so first of all we're going to do this one to put some edges on the rest of these guys here. So this is lighter. A little bit of white in it. Okay. This is coming up around here. And then it's coming like this. And this one here is coming like this. This is right in there. 
is a little darker. And some nice light right in here. And then there's a nice petal coming right here. It's coming down right there. And that is quite a bit brighter. right in there. This one here is quite a bit lighter, right in there, and there, and there. And then inside of that, and I think this needs to be a little bit bigger and a little lighter on the edge here. Yep, there we go. Okay, and then this one here, in the center there again, we have some dark things. And, I, and once again, I, I believe they're called stamens, but I'm not sure. And But I do know that they have some cute little bright yellow things on top of them. Okay. Now we need to do our violet tulip. We're almost out of time. We probably have about 10 minutes left. So let's see what we can do here. That violet tulip, I want it to be mostly magenta. So I'm gonna put that over here so I can work with it. And it's, I'm going to make that a rather dark tulip. Colors over here. And I'll put just a little bit of blue, my darker blue, in there for the darker areas. And I'm going to put just a little bit of the white in some of it for my lighter areas that I want to pop. And we'll just see how this, how this goes. We just have a few minutes now, and I don't know where the time goes when I'm, when I'm here painting with you. It just seems to fly by. It, I, I really don't know. Some that the show could go longer, but then I don't really think that I have enough stamina for that. Okay, here we go. Let's see here what we can get. All right, now I see him as being quite dark right in here. And right over here. Boy, that is dark, isn't it? Wow. I see it as being a little darker coming down this side and going under here. And it's dark up in there. a little dark right in here and right in there. OK, 
Okay, now then we can take and I saw a tulip like this in the magazine and it looked like an ice cream cone. It was so beautiful. Oh, I'm so quiet. I'm sorry. I'm really deep in thought here. All right. Didn't turn out to be quite as crimson as I, or um, magenta violet as I wanted it to be, but it doesn't look bad with the color combination that we have on there. Um, let me see here. What can we do? See now, I think I'll put a, just a little bit of the background of this in the background here to kind of make this come together just a little bit better. put some of this up here too. I kind of like the way that looks. Doesn't look much like a garden, does it? It's beginning to look like an abstract, but you know what? I really don't care because I like it and I'm having fun. 
And that's what's important, right? Have fun. If you're going to do it, have fun. If you, you know, if it's not going to be fun, don't do it. Unless you're being paid. <laughs> okay. I think that kind of messed it up a little bit and made it so that it's not so all righty let's see here does that look anything at all like what we have over here hmm well sort of kind of I don't know. I think the only thing I could do is maybe I take one minute here and take some really dark green and come in here and punch up those greens just a tad. And then I'm afraid I'm going to have to say, bid you all adieu because my time is out. But I think that it has great possibilities. And when you tune into the next show and you see it, I'm sure that you're going to think, hmm, I can't believe she did that. She saved the day. So there you go. That's a walk through my garden. It's... Um, <laughs> it's got a lot of work to be done on it, but I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. It looks pretty good. So the, once again, this is Kitty Lynn Klish, and we're painting. We're doing painting journeys, and I hope you enjoyed this journey across this canvas with me today as I absolutely had a marvelous time playing. Thank you so much for joining us. Bye-bye. Us. Financial knowledge is power. Be empowered.